You guys, concerts are starting to take place again all over the globe, even in the States. And that means it's time to take advantage of one of the most important aspects that comes to building a career as an artist, and that's live performance. And in this episode, I'm gonna break down how you can open up and perform at some of the biggest shows for some of the biggest names in your genre. I'm Jay Jonas, this is Beethoven. But if you're new here, or if you haven't yet, just hit that subscribe button. But I won't waste any of your time. Let's get the ball rolling. All right, so at this point, you guys are probably wondering, what is this strategy you're talking about, Jay? A lot of artists don't like this strategy, and uh, that's okay. They won't utilize it, they won't get their name out there, and they're gonna stay stagnant with their careers. Now, this is called pay to play. When I say this, it's to some artists the worst thing that they could hear. They, they don't wanna hear this, all right? Most of you guys are probably going, no, if I'm gonna perform live, I want to get paid to perform live. And that's great. Ultimately, you should be getting paid to perform live, but check this out. And I am a promoter, like I said, okay? I'm the guy that threw the concerts. I'm the guy that booked venues in my area. And I'm the guy that made it all happen. So coming from my perspective, this is how I feel. Now, if you're an artist that has a mass following, and I know that if I book you and pay you, you're gonna bring in a crowd to my show, well then guess what? I'm gonna pay you because I know that there's a win situation for me. Because as a concert promoter, this is what you guys need to know. You got to book a venue that's gonna cost you. You got to promote that's gonna cost you running ads, doing all this stuff to promote this show. And in the end, you barely, barely make a profit. Sometimes you don't even break even. So as a promoter, what matters to us is obviously this is a business, so we want to make money and we definitely don't want to lose money. Okay. So if we're going to pay an artist, this artist has to have a following you guys. And so if you don't have that following yet, don't trip because pay to play is going to be great for you. Your biggest goal in the beginning shouldn't be how do I make money because you are not there yet. You make money from the following you have. So in the beginning when you don't have that, your focus should be what? It should be gaining exposure to your target audience so you have the chance to wow them so you could build this audience around your name that ultimately will one day allow you to monetize your music, you guys. Now that the coronavirus is starting to settle somewhat or now that concerts are starting to take place, this means you need to attack live performance, okay? So if you've got some kind of thing stopping you from doing this, like you're nervous or you think that you can't get booked for a show or you're just only going to perform if you get paid for that show, well, I'm gonna tell you that if you wanna stay stagnant, keep doing that, but if you wanna grow as an artist, then you need to perform any way that you can and most likely that's gonna involve having to pay to play. Now that we've got that clear, I'm gonna show you how you utilize it and win from this, okay? Really, wherever you're at, hopefully you're in or close to some major city that has venues that host big shows, okay? What you are going to want to do, this is step one, now that these shows are starting to take place, you're going to want to follow these venues, okay? You're gonna to want to look them up on their sites, follow them on their social media. Your job here is to keep an eye on the shows as soon as they come out. So step one, you're on the lookout for shows as soon as they come out, as soon as the word comes out that they got booked. Your next task is to figure out who's in charge of promoting this show. Because whoever booked it, they probably paid a lot of money to get that big name artist to come and perform. Okay, and as a promoter, one of my strategies to, to ensure that I'm gonna make some money to get some people through the doors was going, okay, I need to find some openers for this name who I can have sell tickets, number one, or pay to play to open up, all right? So you need to figure out who's in charge so you can work out a deal with them to be able to open up for this big name artist. Whoever that artist is in your genre that's well established, it has a huge following. Okay, you might have paid to play there, 
you might not even know that artist. You might not even see that artist that whole time that you're going to perform. But guess what? Those fans that are watching that concert, they don't know that. They will instantly think that because this guy is opening up for so and so, they must be established in this industry. They've earned their name. Like, who is this guy? How is he opening up for Gunna or or little baby or whatever it is that's in the hip-hop field but you know a big name artist right so that right there earns social proof that builds interest who is this guy and a lot of people there's this certain type of music fan that wants to be the person that discovers new artists before their friends do if they go check out one of their favorite artists live and they see you're opening up and they don't know you but you're opening up for this big name they can instantly be converted into a fan and want to follow you and buy into you as a brand way quicker than them seeing your ad because guess what like i said before everybody is seeing ads right now especially if you're in hip-hop it's the most oversaturated market and that's why you got to think outside of the box if you want to stand outside of the noise okay and this is one of the best ways you could do it you guys so back to the strategy is if you see a show that's coming out okay you see a flyer for a big name artist at a venue when you look at that flyer most of the time there's going to be a company name at the top of the flyer. I'll show you an example of my flyer when I did my show. Beethoven was my concert promotion company. So if you see a show that's coming out and you see the flyer, you don't see any opening acts on that flyer, you see the business name, now it's time to reach out to that business, okay? That promotion company, whoever that promoter is, look them up on social media, Google his name, find a way to reach out. And trust me, they're looking for people that are going to open for their shows because you guys are the insurance that they need to make sure that they're gonna at least break even on these shows, okay? Now you're going to have to pay, but there's other routes of negotiation you can take that might allow you to even make a little bit of money on this show. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how to go about doing this. You need to flex your negotiation skills and try to work out a deal. This is the best thing that you could do is try to work out a deal where, hey, let me sell some tickets to your show. I'll bring people through the door. Let me sell some tickets and, and let me make a little profit on it. Can I make some profit on it? Can I make 50%? I mean, start high go and then work your way down. Most likely they're gonna say no. But uh, basically what you can do is work out some type of deal that if you sell some tickets, you'll make a percentage of each ticket that you sell, okay? Now that, when it comes to being something that's new in the game, doesn't have much of a following, it's gonna be probably the best position you could be in to open up for these artists. You you negotiated a deal, you're good, you got an uh, opener spot, and then you even got a chance to make some profit off of the ticket, okay? So these are some of the negotiations that you're gonna wanna do. You're gonna wanna reach out, hey, I, I saw your show, um, you know, I'm an artist in the local area, you know, this is my social media, I, I know I'm just building my following, but check this out, I think I could be, bring people through the door, I'm also willing to sell some tickets. I would like to perform for this artist on this show, tell me what I need to do. Okay, and then from there you open up the negotiation. Now, if they've already got all these opener slots booked, if, if it's too late, if you didn't find them soon enough, don't worry, open up some conversation and say, hey, look, I'm in the local area. I'm trying to perform at any show that you guys got going on. So please, if you got a show going on, if you want an opener that's willing to sell some tickets, let me know. And, uh, and that's how you start a relationship with these promoters in your area. That's that's one of the things you guys need to be doing is you need to be working with these promoters. They're the ones that are booking these big name shows. This is what you want, you guys. This is gonna get you farther in your career than any Facebook ad, than any Instagram ad. It's gonna take a little muscle to flex. It's gonna take more moves, but that's gonna make it so you're doing what most aren't because the more steps in the process it takes to actually accomplish the goal, the least amount of people are doing it. You wanna be doing what these other artists aren't. Okay, if you want to be building this name, if you want to be standing out from this crowd, especially if you're in a genre that's just oversaturated where anybody could grab a microphone, edit a beat, and then make a song and then run an ad to it, you need to stand out from that noise. You need to be doing what most of these artists are not. How do you maximize the benefit 
of performing live for this big name artist. You already got the slot, the show's booked, okay? Well, you guys need to come up with promotional materials, you need to promote the show, and this goes not just promoting online, but having flyers. And think about this, right? You got people, your target audience, you're gonna be performing in front of. How do you leave an everlasting impression besides that great performance? People love free swag. All right, so this is where you're gonna to wanna to invest in your brand, create stickers, create promo materials, and give them out for free. Really, the best thing that you could do at your performance is to get a friend, hire somebody to hand out promo materials during the performance, before the performance, after the performance, okay? So this is handing out flyers with codes on it that people could scan so they could find your music. That's another thing that I'm starting to see now that I think is a big opportunity. So this strategy is called pay to play, all right? And this is what I suggest that you guys start putting thought on how you could go about implementing this along with your ads and take advantage of this opportunity, especially now that we got concerts coming out. What do you think people are gonna wanna do? Trust me as a concert promoter, this is important. I've seen artists blow up because of this and build names around their brands because they steady performed live. Some of them don't even use Facebook ads because they've already built up that following, that buzz from these live shows. Now I'm gonna end it at that, you guys. Like I said, if you are new here, if you just haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. If you got any questions about today's episode, then leave a comment, all right, and I'll get back to you. And just so you know, the fan funnel, I'm, I'm getting right back on that. I just wanted to make this episode because concerts are starting to take place. Until next time, keep making music, keep staying true to yourself. Peace.